For a while now, Google Earth has been a staple in the entire Google lineup, allowing anyone with a web browser access to satellite imagery of the entire world. From the mountains of the Swiss Alps to the urban jungle of Tokyo, Google Earth allows anyone to travel right from their home. And now, Google Earth is repackaging their powerful global imagery for the filmmaker with Google Earth Studios. This browser-based program allows the user to export simulated satellite footage of almost any location on Earth. From helicopter and drone vantage points to global rotation views, users can now simulate any Earth-based footage they need. That's a tall order, so let's dive in and see how it all works. And then we'll take our exported video into After Effects and see how we can best utilize this new free tool. First off, go to the Google Earth Studio website. Being a browser-based tool, there are no downloads necessary. Though, as of this recording, it might still be in beta, so you may need to ask for access. Just make sure you have a good internet connection. If you click the drop-down arrow on the left, you'll see that there are a couple of quick start projects you can jump right into. For quick and precise shots, or getting to learn the primary strengths of the program, these are great projects to check out. For our purposes, we're going to open up a blank project. Title it, enter in the dimensions and frame rate so that they match the project you're using it for, and click Start to create your new project. If you've worked with any nonlinear editor, this may look somewhat familiar. We have a timeline, a playback control panel, and a preview area. However, remember that we're generating one continuous clip, so there are significant differences in function. Let's go top down and see what we have. On the top left, just below the menu bar, is a search bar. Let's use it to look up a specific location. As soon as we press Enter, you'll see our top and camera view windows zoom in and center on that location. Notice in the map area, there's a strange red box in the center. Click and drag on that box, and you'll see that it's the camera. Over in the camera view window, we can control the perspective a little more intuitively. Left click and drag to pan around the map, Scroll on the middle wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Note that the zoom will center on your cursor, so hover it on the specific place you want to zoom into. Click and drag the middle mouse button to tilt the camera. Now we can fully experience Google Earth's 3D map. Be aware that only certain cities will have detailed 3D geometry. You can view them by clicking View Available 3D Cities. Notice that when we tilt and rotate the camera, a small circle appears indicating the anchor point around which the camera is pivoting. Let's take a look at the timeline on the bottom. Listed along the left side are the attributes we've been manipulating. Instead of dragging within the camera view window, we can drag these values side to side or get really granular and enter specific values. Right next to these values is the Add Keyframe button. Once you have your start position framed the way you want, click on these buttons to create keyframes. Or you can click on this button which creates a keyframe for all attributes. Let's scrub forward on the timeline 72 frames. Adjust the camera view window to the second position. Unlike programs like After Effects, keyframing isn't automatic in Google Earth Studio. Instead, the Add Keyframe buttons will turn yellow to indicate the camera position is different from the previous keyframe values. Click the Add Keyframe buttons again to save the new position. Otherwise, any shift in the timeline will snap the camera back to the previous position. Select the keyframes and right-click to bring up the easing options. Click on Auto-Ease. 
the line between keyframes changes to indicate where easing has been applied. If you want more control, click on an attribute on the left to bring up the graph editor. Toggle between the value graph and speed graph on the right. Hold shift and click on multiple attributes if you want to adjust them together. Now let's place a camera target. Camera targets are a simple way to focus the view on a single point on the map. To do so, simply right click on the map where you'd like the camera to focus and click Set Camera Target. Notice in the camera view window our carefully framed shot has changed. Right now, the camera is automatically calculating its pan and tilt angles to point straight at our camera target. Not to worry, here's how to fix that. In the timeline, a new attribute labeled Influence has added itself. This determines the strength of the target's influence on the camera. Enter in 0% for now and we're back to our original keyframing. Make sure to click the Add Keyframe button. Now let's scrub forward a little more and zoom our camera way out. It may be easier to control from the Map View window. Let's also change the influence value to 100%. Don't forget to click on the Add Keyframe button. Let's set our end position now. Scrub to the end, place the camera, and click the Add Keyframe button. Notice in the Map View window, the camera path is illustrated. Right now it's a straight line, which will result in a weird perspective shift in the middle of the shot. Let's adjust it so that it's more equidistant from the target. Now press the spacebar to check the playback and make sure it looks all right. Now as is, the footage looks great. We can export it out now and be done. However, since we're adding graphics that need to be matched to our camera move, there's one more step to do. We're creating graphic overlays for the downtown LA neighborhoods of Bunker Hill, Historic Core, Financial District, and South Park. So we grabbed a reference of the neighborhood borders online. To match the move, we need a common point between both the Google Earth footage and the graphic we're going to be making. Technically, we can use any point. To be as accurate as possible, we'll use this top corner where the 110 and 1st Street meet. On the map view, right-click on the corner and choose Set Track Point. We'll use this information to match this footage with the graphics we've created. Name it and exit that window. If you find that any point needs to be adjusted, simply drag it in the Map View window. We need to set one more track point, and we'll put it on the corner of Broadway and Washington. Why? Because it's pretty much the opposite edge of our graphic, and will give us a fairly accurate reference. Now it's time to render our footage. Click the Render button on the top right of the screen. Here, you'll see a preview of your footage. Make sure the Google attribution is in a pleasing place. To change its position, click the drop-down menu here. Switch over to the Advanced Settings and check the box for Include 3D Tracking Data. Name the file and hit Start. At the time of recording, Google Earth Studio would only export JPEG sequences. Once it's done, you should automatically download a zip file to your computer. Unzip it, and let's switch over to After Effects. Start a new project. Click File, Scripts, Run Script File, and navigate to the .jsx file we just created. Open it, and it creates a composition with the footage, track points, and camera all ready for you. 
On a side note, After Effects will interpret the frame rate of JPEG sequences according to the program preferences, regardless of what you exported the project at. If they don't match, simply right-click the sequence in the project window, select Interpret Footage Main, and change the frames per second to match. Now we can play through the footage and make sure it looks all right. Helpfully, Google Earth Studio attached text to our track points to make sure they're sticking the way we want. Let's leave this alone for now and create our graphic assets. Import and create a new composition with the reference picture. If you're creating a custom border or a driving path, you can simply use a screenshot of the map of your chosen location. Draw over it with the pen tool to create shape layers for your After Effects shot. It's important that the map is accurately oriented with north pointing straight up. This way, when the graphic is overlaid, it will be correctly positioned. Great! Now we have a few shape layers to play with. Remember, our track point was at this corner, so we need to adjust all the anchor points to match. Select the Bunker Hill layer, switch to the Pan Behind tool by pressing Y, and move the anchor point to this corner. From here, press Ctrl C on a PC, Command C on a Mac to copy the anchor point value, and Ctrl V or Command V to paste it onto the other shape layers. Do the same with the position value. Now press Ctrl C or Command V to copy these shape layers and Ctrl V or Command V to paste them onto our Google Earth Comp. Make sure the layers are 3D enabled and then press and hold Shift while parenting all four shape layers to the 110 and first track point layer. Shift parenting will not only parent one layer to another, but it will also orient the child layers exactly to the parent, making our shape layers lay flat on the surface of the map. All we have to do now is scale the layers to match our map. This is what the second track point is for. Locate it and do your best to match that point with the corner of the graphic. Play it back and make sure the graphic is sticking well and corresponding to our footage. At this point, we can play around with the color, look and animation of our graphic to create our final shot. Google Earth Studio is an incredibly powerful footage generator, allowing us access to shots that we'd otherwise need satellites or helicopters for. Now there's still plenty to discover and experiment with. Try out the Quick Start projects Google provides to get an idea of the scope of possibilities.